So finally, I'd like to introduce Jocelyne Eret. Uh, she's from the Right Packaging, but over the course of her career, she's worked with and for a number of uh, the major global brand owners, including McDonald's and Nestle. Um, Jocelyne is going to be challenging some of the preconceptions about uh, packaging and sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Before starting my presentation, I would like to uh, show you a short film, a short video, in order to give you a little bit of context. Why is it that increasingly people think packaging is wasteful and useless? Unnecessary packaging creates unwanted waste. The incorrect use leads to bans and the declaration of plastic war. Our mistakes lead consumers to consider packaging as a danger to the environment. In short, too much packaging has killed packaging. Packaging, single use or reused is a hollow debate. We need both. Sometimes single use plastic saves our lives. As online and offline shopping have merged, the main issue for omni-channel products in the next years will be to avoid visible waste from non-recovered packaging and invisible waste from the wasted space in packaging, all the while reducing costs and creating a new consumer experience. This is the right time to change, to avoid further bans on packaging. Sometimes people forget that we have used packaging throughout history to transport and preserve products. There is no bad or good material, only wrong or right packaging. To make the right choice, we need to have the full picture and we need to consider what is vital for human life. In this Anthropocene time, we humans are changing our environment and packaging choices have a major impact. The time to act is over. Change is already here. It's urgent we adapt. We can survive three minutes without air, three days without water and three months without food. We must choose the right packaging whilst considering its effect on lowering air pollution. Packaging manufactured with clean energy and lightweight material reduces air pollution. Access to fresh water is one of the biggest environmental issues. Packaging made with raw materials which use water and pesticides will affect it. Preserving land and food. We currently consume our available annual global resource earlier each year and at this rate, by 2050, we will need three times more resources than we currently have. So packaging has a crucial role to play in resource preservation. Mismanaged waste is the real issue. The future of sustainable packaging requires the right choice of material with a reduced negative impact on the three human needs and a lower impact on the environment. The circular economy alone is not enough. We need filling economy to avoid invisible waste. Stop the myth. There is no wrong or right material, only wrong or right packaging. Uh, I remember when I was a student uh, I was doing a PhD and my mom was one day asked me, what is uh, the topic of your PhD? What is your research uh, subject? And I say, well, I'm, I'm working on the interaction between uh, packaging and food. It's quite complex and I, I'm working on a yogurt pot. What? You are kidding. You are working on the waste of something that I put on my bin? Is it a job? So this is just to explain that it was 25 years ago, but packaging is still perceived as a waste and useless things. So why is that? Uh, let's talk five minutes about plastic materials. Why plastic did lost the packaging war? Um, there is a lot of different reasons, but maybe we can just review four. The first one is the product itself. Packaging plastic is not one product. It's a family of hundreds of uh, different type of plastic material, different product, different uh, barrier property, different function. So it's very difficult to have one common view about one uh, about the plastic. The second thing is uh, 
politician. I don't know for Sweden, but I can tell you that in France, the politics, uh, the politicians are really riding the wave of the plastic attack because consumers are voters and electors and it's easier for politics to take some decision regarding the ban of a material instead of taking some more complex decision about mismanaged waste, for example. When we speak about waste, we can ask the question, did the industry miss the point? Because if you recall, when we had the beverage carton, it was a quite difficult complex uh, material with a six layer. You have polyethylene, you have aluminium, you have carton, but the industry invested a lot in collection and infrastructure to recycle it. And now it's perceived as something quite uh, environmentally friendly by the consumer. And finally, communication. We are in a world of instant communication with a lot of fake news, a lot of uh, uh, stuff which are not possible to uh, verify. And it's very difficult in this world to hear the voice of the packaging industry. I'm not saying about the plastic industry, but the packaging industry, saying that there is no good or bad material. Maybe wrong and right packaging, but the material itself has some functions. So what are the consequences of this war? The good thing, and this we heard about that uh, later, uh, this afternoon, this is a waste management system, uh, which has been taken into account by most of the company now. Everyone wants to use a recyclable or compostable or a re um, a recyclable material and plastic, so that's great. Uh, so this is a good point. Uh, most of the company now also, have also the, in their marketing plan and communication plan some information regarding uh, the plastic. What is not so good, this is what's happened with the ban and the taxes. I don't know if you hear what's happened in, in France these days, but they want to uh, tax or increase the tax for material which will not be made of 100% recycled. Uh, plastic, which maybe some have some issue regarding food safety, for example. Something I do not have too much time to, uh, to, to discuss, but this is also the fact that single-use plastic may ban, may have some social and local discrimination impact. Because imagine, you are a poor person, you do not have a lot of money, you cannot afford to go every day to the trendy delicatessen, the nice uh, butcher, etc., to buy your food. You go to a supermarket and you buy long shelf life with a lot of quantity usually. So telling to these people that the packaging that they use is killing the planet is maybe not fair also. Uh, and what we do still do not know, this is the overall impact on uh, a ban of uh, plastic material. Now, when we look at the food and beverage segment, um, we can, uh, or the question could be, can we, can we uh, ban single-use plastic? Yes, we can. But is it the right thing to do? It's another question, because we have to take into account several factors and several elements. First of all, the distribution chain. Uh, is it a direct or indirect or long or short distribution uh, chain? The second point will be the format and the convenience for uh, preserving food or meat or fish, etc. What is the best solution? And when we take a ban, and for example, this is what I have seen also, uh, like for the cutlery and the polystyrene ban, most of the people now, our company, are replacing polystyrene with bamboo. Do we know what is the impact on the bamboo harvesting or post-harvesting and on the supply chain of bamboo? And finally, what about the safety and security? Um, you know that in stadium, uh, we, there is some ban regarding um, glass and metal because it's dangerous. So of course you can reuse uh, a cup or having some cup which will be reusable for drinking your beer. But is it the right thing to do? do are we sure that these two guys on the picture will take their dirty cup uh, at home? Or would it be better for this specific case to have a poly polyethylene terephthalate PET cup, which is lightweight, that people will recycle just after? So this is some question we need to ask. Alors, here it's a little bit of provocation, but uh, hopefully, hopefully this is a single-use plastic packaging. You can still 
use if you want the previous one which was in the goat intestine you can fix it watch it and reuse it if you want I'm not sure it's the right things to do but you know sometimes single use plastic save really your life and this is what the recommendation also of the uh, World Health Organization uh, to demand it's not a, even a recommendation it's really a request a demand to use single use serang uh, in order to uh, avoid that people use twice one serang and then this uh, have some issue with uh, spread of disease now talking about e-commerce what is the situation with e-commerce you know that online and offline uh, shopping has merged but it's still shopping uh, so it needs to be attractive. We could have think that uh, e-commerce will make the product great again uh, because you have a lot of recipe on the web uh, which uh, makes the product king. But it was without, and, and so we can think that the packaging will be simpler. But this is without thinking that the e-commerce chain is really more complex than the normal retail chain and you need some uh, transport packaging which are quite performant it's 10 times more complex in terms of supply chain usually you will still have also the consumer experience they when they order product online they still want to have a good uh, experience with the product that they have ordered for themselves but we have to take into account also the fact that they may be disappointed and put some picture on the social network uh, with some bad consequences for your brand and finally the waste the transport packaging will be received at home instead uh, at the retailer site so uh, there is some uh, uh, i saw that uh, in some uh, cities that now they are thinking about increasing the municipalities taxes in order to uh, recycle the the waste so waste is also an important problem in the e-commerce so when we speak about waste, I call um, the empty space or the wasted space that you have in the packaging as invisible waste. People focus their effort on the visible one, but it could be also interesting to focus our effort on the invisible waste. Um, because by reducing the size of the cardboard or having the right size of the carton, you may save a lot of money first and secondly also uh, have uh, uh, less CO2 emission, less microparticle in the atmosphere and uh, save also some raw material. So it's a very important thing that circular economy for me is not enough. You need to combine the circular economy with the feeling economy in order to have a sustainable economy. So avoid wasted space. So now when we have said that, what do we do? Back to the basic, back to the M4 system. Um, of course, the LCA, for the one who know what it is, the life cycle analysis, is the best thing to do when you are studying a packaging material because it takes in do into consideration a lot of different things. But the LCA, it's a very complex analysis, very difficult to understand, uh, based on assumption, and, and, and it's also work in a, a very stable environment somehow, when nothing is changing. But we are not in a stable environment anymore. We are in a climate change situation. I guess you know that uh, we reached the point of non-return two years ago already. It was in 2016 when we reached the 400 ppm of CO2 in the atmosphere. And when we, if we stop right now this CO2 emission, it will still last 100 years in, the, in our sky. So we, we will have this climate change. So it's too late, we need to adapt. Uh, and if we need to adapt, what will be the crucial things for the people, for the human, human being? There is three things, and this is what I call the rule of the three. You can s nearly survive uh, three minutes without air, three days without water, and nearly three months, three months, it's 80 days, uh, without food. So we must adapt all our actions regarding these three vital needs. So what does it mean for packaging? We need to adapt our choice of packaging for the packaging which will impact the less as possible the air pollution. So clean energy if it's possible and also lightweight uh, in terms of uh, um, microparticules uh, emit during the transport for example. 
The second thing will be to uh, adapt the packaging regarding what you use, which is quite new because there is a lot of people who are promoting reusable packaging. In the food and, pack in the food and beverage industry, if you have reusable packaging, it means that you have to clean the packaging. And if you have to clean the packaging, it means that you have to use water. And water is really, really the main future stress for a lot of population in a lot of different zones. So we need to choose packaging which will not impact the water use. And finally, if we look at the food, the available food, we need also to choose some packaging which will not impact or compete with arable land, which will be used for food uh, or for the animals uh, for the future. It's very important to have that in mind because it can also help to prefer some material regarding some other. And obviously also having the right packaging in order to be sure that we preserve the food. Food waste costs more than packaging waste. Sometimes people have forgot it. So it's very important. So we need to adapt and make the right packaging choice, which means no wasted space, go for the feeling economy, and score the packaging you choose against the human risk air, water, and uh, the food. And we can use some uh, strategic tool in order to be sure that we will avoid uh, unnecessary packaging or replace unnecessary packaging. We can also uh, draw the DNA of the packaging we would uh, like to have as ideal packaging, uh, taking into account a lot of different factors and build the plan and the tactics to reach this, uh, this um, ideal situation. So, in conclusion, I will say that there is no bad or good material. There is different function, but there is wrong and right packaging. Let's be humanly sustainable. We all have a shelf life, so we need to be conscious of that. And thank you very much for, uh, for your attention.